want to invite you to open your Bibles to continue our series, The God of John, um, in the Gospel of John chapter 6. Please open your Bibles in John chapter 6, John chapter 6. And we are just going to read what I believe is the heart of this chapter found in the verses 32 through 40. I want you, please, to open your Bibles. You can use a pew Bible and just be sure you're opening that section of uh, the Gospel of John in chapter 6. We are going to read verses 32 through 40. John chapter 6, 32 through 40. And this is what the Bible says. If you're there, say amen, please. Amen. The Bible says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I said to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Amen. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Verse 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet not, do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This morning, friends, we are going to study together the message entitled, The Bread of Life. The Bread of Life. Could you just say out loud with me this phrase? I need to eat this bread. Can you say it with me? I need to eat this bread. One more time. I need to eat this bread. Let's pray. Father, we want to pray one more time, Lord, for your power. For your presence we pray one more time father for you to to glorify your name here in this place our heavenly father please give us please give us ears to hear father please give us a mind to know and grant us lord a heart to believe lord give us the provision we need for today we pray all this in the wonderful and power, powerful name of Jesus and let everyone say amen the bread of life the bread of life mm -hmm. let's see what we have here The bread of life. Food has the potential to make you popular. Food has, has the potential to, to give you friends. Food has the potential to make you likable. Any, any Samoa in the house? Can I agree with me? In John chapter 6, Jesus performed two powerful miracles. Now, now, how many of you know that miracles are not the end? Miracles are means to a greater end. Now, in the first miracle that we find in John chapter 6, Jesus fed 5,000 people, 15,000 people, 20,000 people with only five pieces of bread 
and two fish. And I like how John gives us these this hints of, of how wonderful this was when he says it was not just two fish, it was two small fish. Friends, here's a question for you and for me to start meditating upon while we're studying. Who can do that? Feeding 20,000 people out of just five pieces of bread and two small fish, who can do that? See, imagine, imagine the, the, the scenario here. People have come from all over the place to hear Jesus. They're, they're tired, they're hungry, they're resourceless. What does Jesus do? He gives them a sign. He gives them a sign. Now, now remember, in John, signs are a proof and evidence of the divinity of Jesus. Do you remember that? Who can do these kind of things? Who can give these kind of signs? He fed, he fed thousands. Now, after, after this wonderful display of, of, of his power and mercy, Jesus sends his disciples to the other side of the lake. You know the story found in, in John chapter 6. He, the, the, story, the story says that he didn't get on the boat, but he came later. He came later, listen, walking on the water. He then, he then go with the disciples on the boat. He comes later walking on the water. Friends, who does that? Who can do that? Who can walk on the water? This, my dear friends, is impossible. This is an impossibility, friends. You need to know that your problems, though they might seem overwhelming to you, they are not so to God. Our God is the God of the impossible. Listen, listen. He wills to do the impossible for you. You need to know that. He wills to do the impossible for you. No matter what you may be going through, no matter what you might be facing, no matter what is keeping you um, uh, awake all through the night no matter how hard your heart might be might be aching dear friends the God that we serve the God that we worship the God that we adore is the God of the impossible so two miracles three elements bread fish water is that it is that it? Just, just, just so, so that they are fed and they receive the bread, so that they, they um, receive the fish and, and they have something to combine the bread they had with? Just so that they would see Jesus walking on the water. That, is that it? No, friends. The answer to that question is no. That's not it. Because that's just the beginning of chapter 6. Now, friends, what comes after is the lesson that always follows the miracle. Always. You and I need to know that miracles are not the end. They are means to a greater end. So there is the, the two miracles that we find in John chapter 6. Marvelous as they are, they are not the end. They just are tools in the hands of the divine master and teacher to teach a greater lesson. What comes after is the teaching that always follows then the provision. Friends of mine, you and I need to understand that the provision is never the end of the road. Provision is the road to a greater end. Some of us think that because we pray, we pray and we get healed, is done. Thank you, God. And that prayer, that dependency, that coming to the Lord it has come to an end. Could it just be, dear friends, that the Lord has healed you so that He can accomplish something bigger than that through you? So let's go to the teaching. Let's go to the, to the teaching itself. Now, when, when you attempt to preach, I want to tell you this. The section of John, that, that, of chapter 6, that is coming up, you may find yourself with two different different challenges two number one john 6 this portion it's already a sermon here's a question how, how do you make a sermon out of a sermon have you ever tried to do that 
And some people would say, it's not a sermon, it's a teaching. Okay, so it's a teaching. How do you make a teaching out of a teaching? So that's the first challenge that you find yourself before when you come to uh, uh, this, the sixth chapter of John. The second one is that chapter 6 is the longest chapter in the Gospel of John. 71 verses. 71 verses. How do you preach this long, long chapter under 30 minutes? And I said too, but let me give you another one. I want to add that one more today is communion service. That's what the table is here. Today is communion service. And you know that sermons during communion service need to be short. So pray for me, please. Now, talking about communion service, talking about communion service, there are two elements that are important during the Last Supper. What are those two elements? Bread, number one, and number two, or juice. And Jesus used these two elements to teach. What did Jesus use these two elements for? To, to teach. No, no, there is a, a, a convergence between the Lord's Supper in John chapter 6. Which one do you think it is? What is that, what is that intersection, intersection between what takes place in John chapter 6, element wise, right? And what happens at the Lord's Supper? The two elements. The convergence is bread. Bread is what is in common between these two events. Listen, church, Jesus took bread to teach the, the vital lesson found in John chapter 6. He used bread. Jesus used bread to, to teach this vital lesson that is found in John chapter 6. What is the big deal about it? What is with bread that is so much used in the Bible? You find it everywhere. Though this is the first time that we find um, um, bread in the Gospel of John. What is with bread in the Bible that is so much used? Thank you for asking that question. Bread, dear friends, is the clearest symbol of food. And even more, is the clearest representation of God's provision. Listen, according to the Jewish uh, understanding, bread at its core is synonymous with life. Bread represents life. It also represents basic substance and also it represents community. This is in the Jewish mind. And why is this important? Because Jewish people wrote what we call the Bible. Bread. Some call it pita. And I did bring a piece of pita. It's somewhere. Somewhere around here. Some other people, some other cultures call bread or something like bread. They call it Susan, can you, can you tell us what this is? Some people call it chapati. Some people call it naan. Some people call it tortilla. But they all do, they are, they are using in this, in, somehow in the same way. It's a version of the same bread. Now, whatever shape, whatever shape, whatever, whatever name is given to it, in most cultures, it is always present it's a present item at meals. You will always find it. You will always find it in some cultures. When, when I came to this country, before I came to this country, I never heard about such a thing as Mexican food. I didn't know it existed. And some of you are looking at me and saying, are you Mexican? No, I'm not Mexican, I'm Ecuadorian. <laughs> and, so, and so I came to this country and I heard about Mexican food. And I, I, the way I heard it was because I was canvassing. I was, I was uh, distributing Christian books. And I came to this house. And this, this kind uh, Mexican family uh, uh, received me. And they gave me food. They gave me food. So when they served the food that they, they, uh, on the table for me to eat, they brought a pile of this and put it on the table. They put it on the table and I started eating and they didn't see me touching the tortilla. And I was eating, eating, I saw them looking at me. So they, they, I, I asked them, is there anything wrong? And they said, why don't you eat the, the tortilla? And I said, okay, what, what is, 
I didn't have an idea how you use this when you eat. I didn't know. So they told me how to use the tortilla because for them, this is a vital element in their meals. And here's the question that the, this friend asked me that day. If you guys don't eat tortillas in Ecuador, how do you eat? <laughs> right? How do you eat? I, I, I got that. I understood in that question that what they meant is that this is essential, essential part of their meals. How do you eat? Jesus uses the, the, the most common item in, in life, bread, to impart one of the greatest lessons ever. And here's the lesson, friends, and our time is running. In chapter 6, people receive this very element to satisfaction. They looked for Jesus. They ate and ate and ate so much. They ate so much that the leftovers were 12 baskets. And this is the, the lesson that Noah learned after he shared all the cookies in, during the story. Right? He shared all the cookies and there were a lot still for him. That's what the, the disciples also faced during this, this time in chapter 6. They share all, and then they have 12 baskets, which is the number for the apostles. It's like, here is for you guys. Take it home. So all these people ate, ate, ate more than what they could eat. But then they looked for Jesus for more of this very kind of bread. And they came to Jesus and here's the question that they asked to Jesus after they found Jesus on the other side of the lake. When did you come here? When did you come here? My friends, I want to suggest to you that what they really wanted to ask is, is it time for lunch? Is it lunch time? Jesus, we're hungry again. See, people look for Jesus because of his provision. People that followed Jesus to the other side of the lake, they were looking for Jesus. They were seeking Jesus because of his provision. They didn't look for Jesus because of his commission. In other words, they were looking for what Jesus was able to give, do for them, not for who Jesus was. Church, be careful. That all we do is to come to the Lord to ask for provision. Forgetting who we're talking to. People, God is not a genie who is ready to make your wildest dream come true. God is not Santa Claus who is ready to give you all the presents you want. God is the king of the universe who loves and cares for you and is ready to command the celestial armies to rescue you when you are in despair. That's who God is. Will he provide for you? Of course he will. But don't just look for God for the bread. There's more in life than this essential element. So Jesus used this particular need to, to teach them the lesson that the provision was meant to carry. Listen, provision is not the end of the road. Provision is the road to proclamation. Provision is not the end of the road. Provision is the end, is the road to proclamation. And here's the proclamation that Jesus was bringing his audience to. I have fed thousands and thousands out of five pieces of bread. Do you want more? Jesus says, you do need more. But not more of this bread. No more of this bread. Only but this bread. And he says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And imagine these people are hungry. Jesus is, is having some kind of bread around. And, and they are still remembering what Jesus did in the beginning of the chapter. And Jesus says, you, you don't only need to look for me for this bread. I am the bread of life. And what's, what's interesting in the text is that, is that the, the, the tendency of, of, of us humans comes out. Because our tendency is to do things to obtain things. I do so that I can get. 
And God understands that. This is the reason why Jesus talks about works in chapter 6. Have you read it? Works we are to do to obtain what he offers. And some of you might say, what, what are you saying, Rudy? What, why are you referring to these works at this time? We're talking about bread. We're talking about food. We're talking about Jesus being the, the bread of life. Why do you bring works? It was Jesus who did that. But what Jesus, what Jesus says rocked their world. And she rocked our words too. He said, you want to know how to work the works of God? Then, listen, believe. Believe. They were ready to hear the master say, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to stop doing. Do this. Don't do this. But instead, Jesus simply says, believe. Now, now, whether you are conscious or not, every single person in this world believes in something. Jesus is not talking about believing only, but believing in Him. We have talked about this word believe many times. We know that it's central in the Gospel of John. So much so that half of, of the total number of views in the New Testament is found in this Gospel. Five of it. 109 times. The Gospel of John has a mission and that is that you may believe in Jesus Christ so when you and I come to this gospel, when you and I come to this book, to study this book, to read this book, we will end up, we will have to end up believing in Jesus. But not believing in Jesus only in Him as, as a good person. Not only believing in Jesus as a good provider. Not only believing in Jesus as a good teacher. Not only believing in Jesus as a good miracle worker, miracle maker. But believing in Jesus as the Son of God. God in the flesh. Why, you may ask. Because this, this, my dear friends, according to verse 27, we're still in the same text, gives you life. And not just any life. It gives you eternal life. Jesus, the bread of life, gives you eternal life. And yes, this life is good. It could be good. And God can supply for this life. But eternal life is better. And God can only give you that. Only God can give you that eternal life. And so in verse 35, we find the proclamation where the title of this message comes from. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Now, this is the first one in the Gospel of John of seven I am proclamations. How many of you, how many of those, friends? Seven of them. I am the bread of life. Then he says, I am the, the light of the world. I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, I am the true vine. I am is the, is the Greek translation for the way God introduced himself to Moses at the burning bush. Ego eimi in the Greek is simply the way to say I am. I am the God of the Old Testament. I am the God that has been walking with you. I am the God, the creator. I am. But the newness now is that God adds a predicate to this uh, sentence and instead of saying I am he now adds the bread of life the light of the world door of the sheepfold good shepherd resurrection and the life the way the truth and in the, in the life the true vine I am the bread of life friends who else can make these proclamations but the son of God who else can say all these but the son of God who else has the authority to say all these but the Son of God, God Himself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the God of John. Jesus is the God of John. And this is why we have to come to Him. He's the only who can give you eternal life. There is no other way. Some may say, what if I can't give up this or that? 
What if I'm too young? What if I'm too old? What if I'm too bad? Jesus says in verse 37, you come to me and I will receive you. I will not cast you out. Listen, church, once you go to Jesus, his reception is guaranteed. Once you come to Jesus, he will receive you no matter what. No, how, no matter how down you have gone, no matter how far you have gone, Jesus will receive you. Praise be this God. Why is this guaranteed? Why is this guaranteed that Jesus will receive us no matter how filthy we might be? Why is it guaranteed? guaranteed? Because that is His will. It's guaranteed because that is His will. The word will is how we are going to end this today. The word will in the Greek, thelema, means desire. It means God wishes. Now, I want to tell you, friends, that when God wishes, things come to happen. When the Bible talks about will, it's talking about the desire of God, the desire of the God of the impossible. God desires is for you to be with Him. And He will do the impossible for that to happen. Let me correct that. He has done the impossible for that to happen. All you got to do is to accept. All you got to do is to believe it. How do I do this? Jesus ends our portion of study stating the powerful desire of, the, of His Father. Found in verse 40. Everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. And I will rise Him up at the last day. Believe, the word believe we have studied many times. There is a new word that I want to introduce in our, in our study of the Gospel of John. And that is the word to see. The verb to see. This word to see is translated um, in, by John. But they translated from the Gospel of John. From one of the six um, most common Greek words for to see. But this word in the Greek is only found, is found mainly here in the Gospel of John, 27 times. There is no other book that is even close to the Gospel of John with this one word. Why is it so important that John decided to use this word? Because remember, all you have to do is to see Jesus and believe in Him, to receive everlasting life. I want everlasting life, and I know you want everlasting life. How do we obtain it? See Jesus. Here is what the word in the Greek means. It means to behold. It means to view mentally. For us to understand, this word is used when the disciples were on the boat and they saw Jesus walking towards them. They saw, the text says, they saw Jesus walking on the water. So this word, see Jesus, actually means that when you are, when you're using the eyes of faith, you are actually, is will be like using your actual Eyes. But it not only means that, it also means to see this kind of, for this Greek, actually means that it's a, it's a kind of see that is an earnest but more continued inspection. You want to be saved, friends? You want to be saved? You got to fix your eyes on Jesus. Your physical eyes, not only your faith, uh, the eyes of faith, but your physical eyes need to be fixed on Jesus. Because the moment your eyes are fixed on Jesus, then your eyes are not looking at anything else. Bottom line, you don't need anything else. Because once you have Jesus, you have all you need. So you want to be saved? See and believe in Jesus, the bread of life. And we don't have more than... More time now. So I'm going to bring to the conclusion what we find in chapter 6. What do we do with this, friends? How, 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 do, I, how do I take this to, to my home and live and be the, be the best parent that I can be, the best son that I can be, the best daughter that I can be? How can I bring this to my life? The disciples actually gave us the, 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 uh, the formula here. And it's one part of the closing 
uh, uh, remarks of this chapter 6. It's found in verse 69. This is what they say, and this is what every single disciple of Jesus is to say. They said, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is what the disciples said, and this is what every true disciple found in this place is to say. We have come to believe, I have come to believe, and know that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now, why bread? Why, why, why would Jesus use bread as a, as a, as a, as a um, prop to, to teach what he wanted to teach in John chapter 6? Because as essential as bread or food is to live, Jesus is the only way to live eternally. And this is so much so that even his very birth place carries this truth. You think this is by accident that Jesus uses bread and, and again and again? No, 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 no. Everything is just orchestrated, designed from the foundation of the world. Before you send, friends, God has already put all these pieces together because He loves you so much that He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be with Him. Where was Jesus born? He was from Nazareth. But he was taken to a different place to be born. What is the name of the place where he was born? Bethlehem. Do you know what Bethlehem means? There are not accidents in this universe. Everything goes according to God's will. Bethlehem means Bethlehem in Hebrew. Bet, house, lehem of bread. House of bread. The Son of God was brought to this city to be born from, because from the beginning, even from His very beginning as a human being, He was to be the bread of life. John chapter 6 is once again a profound and determining declaration in favor of the divinity of Jesus Christ. Church, Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is indeed the Son of God. God the Son, God in the flesh, Jesus is the God of John. Now the key question for you to take home today is, who is Jesus for you? Who is Jesus for you? Today we are going to celebrate what He did for us in a symbolic way. He said that we will continue doing this until, proclaiming this, until he comes again. He hasn't come back yet, friends. He is on his way, though. And this morning, we are going to remember what he did on the cross for each one of us through what we call communion service. So we want to invite everyone in this place today to join us as we celebrate communion service. One of the most important rituals that the church celebrates we do, we would do uh, the foot washing first, and there are rooms around our building. You just get out of the, uh, uh, these doors or back doors here and go to the rooms on the sides. You will see the signs on the doors to, to, for you to know where you have to go. But we want to invite you and encourage you to join us as we celebrate uh, our good Lord who saved for, our, for each one of us, who died for each one of us. And after that, after we have the food washing, we will come back here to this very room. We will be using these two uh, aisles, and then we will have the Lord's Supper together. So please join us, and let's pray before we go to the rooms. And if you don't want to or can't be part of the food washing, please stay here and be part of the Lord's Supper. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you for sending Jesus to us. We want to thank you for providing the ultimate, for giving the ultimate provision. Jesus not only is the bread, He's not only like those different breads that we saw today from here, 
going out here. Jesus is the bread of life. He's the bread of life because He's able to give us life. And not just any life, but the best life. And yes, He was thinking about eternal life, but He was also thinking about this current life. Because He wants His children to be joyful, grateful, thankful, merciful, and so full of love that everyone will know. We belong to Him. Everyone will know that we have eaten of the bread of life. Give us your blessing, eternal Father. And give us power to continue living for you. So one day, even if we die before He comes back, He will, he will raise us up at that beautiful day. Looking forward to that reunion. We pray, Father, that you will bless us today. And be with us as we celebrate what Jesus said we are to celebrate today. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen.